May 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Kings chapters 4 and 5 from the Old Testament. King Solomon ruled over all Israel. These were his officials. Azariah, son of Zadok, was the priest. Elahoreph and Ahijah, the sons of Shisha, wrote down what happened. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilad, was in charge of the records. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was commander of the army. Zadok and Abiathar were priests. Azariah, son of Nathan, was supervisor of the district governors. Zabad, son of Nathan, was a priest and advisor to the king. Ahishur was supervisor of the palace. Adoniram, son of Abda, was supervisor of the work crews. Solomon had twelve district governors appointed throughout Israel who acquired supplies for the king and his palaces. Each was responsible for one month in the year. These were their names. Ben-Hur was in charge of the hill country of Ephraim. ben Deker was in charge of Mekaz, Shalabim, Beth Shemesh, and Elon Beth Hanan. Ben, he said, was in charge of Arabath. He controlled Soko and all the territory of Hefer. Ben Abinadab was in charge of Naphath Dor. He was married to Solomon's daughter, Tapheth. Baena, son of Ahilad, was in charge of Taanach and Megiddo, as well as all of Bethshan next to Zarethan, below Jezreel, from Bethshan to Abel Mehola, and on past Jokmeam. Ben Geber was in charge of Ramoth Gilead. He controlled the tent villages of Jair son of Manasseh in Gilead, as well as the region of Argob in Bashan, including sixty large wall cities with bronze bars locking their gates. Ahinadab, son of Iddo, was in charge of Mahanaim. Ahimeaz was in charge of Naphtali. He married Solomon's daughter, Basimath. Baana, son of Hushai, was in charge of Asher and Aloth. Jehoshaphat, son of Paru, was in charge of Issachar. Shimei, son of Elah, was in charge of Benjamin. Geber, son of Uri, was in charge of the land of Gilead, the territory which had once belonged to King Sion of the Amorites and to King Og of Bashan. He was sole governor of the area. The people of Judah and Israel were as innumerable as the sand on the seashore. They had plenty to eat and drink and were happy. Solomon ruled all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines as far as the border of Egypt. These kingdoms paid tribute as Solomon's subjects throughout his lifetime. Each day Solomon's royal court consumed 30 cores of finely milled flour, 60 cores of cereal, 10 calves fattened in the stall, 20 calves from the pasture, and a hundred sheep, not to mention rams, gazelles, deer, and well-fed birds. His royal court was so large because he ruled over all the kingdoms west of the Euphrates River. From Tifsa to Gaza, he was at peace with all his neighbors. All the people of Judah and Israel had security. Everyone from Dan to Beersheba enjoyed the produce of their vines and fig trees throughout Solomon's lifetime. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for his chariot horses and 12,000 horses. The district governors acquired supplies for King Solomon and all who ate in his royal palace. Each was responsible for one month in the year. They made sure nothing was lacking. Each one also brought to the assigned location his quota of barley and straw for the various horses. God gave Solomon wisdom and very great discernment. The breadth of his understanding was as infinite as the sand on the seashore. Solomon was wiser than all the men of the east and all the sages of Egypt. He was wiser than any man, including Ethan the Ezraite, or Heman, Calcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahol. He was famous in all the neighboring nations. He composed 3,000 proverbs and 1,005 songs. He produced manuals on botany, 
describing every kind of plant from the cedars of Lebanon to the hyssop that grows on walls. He also produced manuals on biology, describing animals, birds, insects, and fish. People from all nations came to hear Solomon's display of wisdom. They came from all the kings of the earth who heard about his wisdom. King Hiram of Tyre sent messengers to Solomon when he heard that he had been anointed king in his father's place. Hiram had always been an ally of David. Solomon then sent this message to Hiram. You know that my father David was unable to build a temple to honor the Lord his God, for he was busy fighting battles on all fronts while the Lord subdued his enemies. But now the Lord my God has made me secure on all fronts. There is no adversary or dangerous threat. So I have decided to build a temple to honor the Lord my God. As the Lord instructed my father David, your son, whom I will put on your throne in your place, is the one who will build a temple to honor me. So now order some cedars of Lebanon to be cut for me. My servants will work with your servants. I will pay your servants whatever you say is appropriate. For you know that we have no one among us who knows how to cut down trees like Sidonians. When Hiram heard Solomon's message, he was very happy. He said, The Lord is worthy of praise today, because he has given David a wise son to rule over this great nation. Hiram then sent this message to Solomon. I received the message you sent to me. I will give you all the cedars and evergreens you need. My servants will bring the timber down from Lebanon to the sea. I will send it by sea in raft-like bundles to the place you designate. There I will separate the logs, and you can carry them away. In exchange, you will supply the food I need for my royal court. So Hiram supplied the cedars and evergreens Solomon needed. And Solomon supplied Hiram annually with 20,000 cores of wheat as provision for his royal court, as well as 20,000 baths of pure olive oil. So the Lord gave Solomon wisdom as he had promised him. And Hiram and Solomon were at peace and made a treaty. King Solomon conscripted work crews from throughout Israel, 30,000 men in all. He sent them to Lebanon in shifts of 10,000 men per month. They worked in Lebanon for one month and then spent two months at home. Adoriam was supervisor of the work crews. Solomon also had 70,000 common laborers and 80,000 stone cutters in the hills, besides 3,300 officials who supervised the workers. By royal order, they supplied large valuable stones in order to build the temple's foundation with chiseled stone. Solomon's and Hiram's construction workers, along with the men from Byblus, did the chiseling and prepared the wood and stones for the building of the temple. God, it gets so exciting when we can connect what's happening in our world today with what happened back then. And I was reading on National Geographic where um, a few years ago, maybe like eight years, seven, eight years ago, they actually found um, some pieces of human activity at the site where Solomon's temple was built. Um, and Solomon's temple unto itself, as we're about to learn, is just magnificent. But uh, I probably shouldn't talk about that since we haven't quite got there yet but just the building itself the fact of all these people working on it and how much activity was around that and now they've uh, they've uncovered things like ceramic bowls and uh, pieces of a little jug and some handmade type of items I don't need confirmations God of the fact that you are real um, you were more real than anything else in my life but there are people out there that are in that spot where those questions and answers just aren't quite matching up in their heart and I know if if it's your chosen time for them to understand things they will but when we can find physical evidence that matches up to what we're showing people in the Bible I think it helps a lot of people sometimes who who may not have that complete uh, faith parameter in their life fully grown uh, they still need some facts to support that faith I know that sounds <laughs> so wrong but but they really do to kind of get to that point where things start to make sense and an answers to their questions start to make sense so how incredible that 
all these thousands of years later, we can actually hold it in our hands. Well, probably not me, maybe the researchers, uh, but we can hold in our hands things that people back during Solomon's time actually touched. Maybe even some of the people we just read about. Oh my gosh, God, that gets so exciting. Connecting the dots in history. I just, I think that's one of my favorite parts about the Bible, especially the Old Testament. God, you are just a wondrous God and you just love, you just allow us to find exactly what we need at the right moment, whether that be artifacts, your heart, forgiveness. Maybe today it's it's just grace and mercy that we need uh, to make it through the day. And no matter what we need, you are just this ultimate amazing supplier of all of that to us. And what you give us more than anything is just love, love that we will never understand not in this lifetime that is unconditional that is without bounds to it, that is for eternity. God, thank you. I love you very much. In your son's name I pray. Amen.